to start here actually not with the volumes, but I want to give you the chance here because I know you're flying down to D.C. and hosting a lot of Congress over at a summit that Coinbase is really spearheading, uh, including Cynthia Lummis and Patrick McHenry. How do you see your presence in Washington today and why is it so important for you and Mark Andreessen to be there? Yeah, well, you're right. We are hosting an event tomorrow uh, called an Update the System event, and we're inviting a bunch of policymakers, members of Congress. And the goal is to talk about all the different use cases of crypto that are emerging. I think there's kind of this trope that's out there, which is that, you know, crypto doesn't have any use case, and it really couldn't be farther from the truth. I mean, crypto, first of all, it's a new form of sound money, right? It's a return to uh, almost like a new gold standard that's digital. In this time of high inflation and deficit spending, I think people are really interested in that. And it's a nice check and balance um, that'll help America uh, with any of the issues there. It's also digitizing the dollar. It's making payments fast, cheap, and global. It's you know allowing artists to sell directly to their fans, decentralized social media. There's all kinds of things that are emerging around use cases in crypto. And so we want policymakers to come together to talk about that, to get the word out. And also to sh see the, the number of Americans that are actually using this technology now so that a very message can be, a very important message can be delivered that, you know, being anti-crypto is political suicide in this political environment. Now, you're talking so much about other use cases for crypto outside of even just being a store of value here, as many people see it as they're entering this asset class, some for the first time with the advent of these spot Bitcoin ETFs. It begs the question, how do you see the future of Coinbase? There are a lot of questions about the future of crypto exchanges in the world where Bitcoin ETFs have gotten so much share. Do you see Coinbase going far and above beyond being simply a crypto exchange? Yeah, so with the you know the ETFs that got approved, we've seen a huge influx of capital into the system. About twelve billion dollars of inflow have happened, and you know some when that happens, sometimes people ask us, well, what does that mean for Coinbase? Well, you know it's actually incredibly positive for Coinbase. Um, we're storing, we're the custodian for about ninety percent of the assets in those Bitcoin ETFs, and so we have monetization opportunities there as a custodian, but we it didn't cannibalize any of the opportunity in our direct products too, our retail app, our institutional product. We actually saw increased inflows there while, the, while we saw $12 billion of inflow into the ETFs. So the ETFs were incredibly positive for the industry. They were a regulatory approval. They unlocked new pools of capital. And Coinbase is gonna be not just a place where you store crypto, it's a place where you can actually trade crypto, you can use it, increasingly in many different applications all over the world. And it's, and it's not just Bitcoin either. You know, we support um, over 100 different crypto assets. So we want Coinbase to be the most trusted and easiest to use place to, to store crypto, to trade it, and to actually use it. And it, we can actually become people's primary financial account in some cases in this new crypto economy. Kind of like a crypto bank? Yeah, one might say that. I don't think we're ever going to go get actually a bank license because banks get licenses to do fractional reserve of the assets. Um, I don't really think that's the right path. I think it's caused all kinds of issues with bank failures and, and that kind of thing. We don't want to do fractional reserve. We want to store 100 percent of customers assets or if they prefer, they don't even have to store it with us. They can do self custody. And, you know, if they choose to opt in their funds into some product to um, earn rewards or something like that, they can choose to do that. We're not going to do it on their behalf um, in the way that banks do with fractional reserves. So it's a new paradigm. I think that um, there's a new generation of people who are looking at, they want to see crypto update the financial system because, you know, 87% of Americans, when you survey them, they say the current financial system doesn't work for them. Fractional reserve is just one piece of that. But if you look at, you know, credit card fees and overdraft fees, and why does it, you know, take two or three business days to send an ACH transfer. And so our financial system really needs to get updated. And that's what we think is that crypto is this most important technology to update the financial system globally, bring economic freedom and good financial infrastructure to people all over the world if they just mm -hmm. have a smartphone with an internet connection. Uh, before we update the system, we have to talk about some of the things you've seen on Coinbase in recent weeks, as well as other exchanges, kind of hiccups along the way as we've seen this new activity really bring Bitcoin to new highs and then back off those highs. Brian, what have you learned from the outages in recent weeks over at Coinbase? when we, we have seen those elevated volumes in activity and trading after we've seen such inflows into the ETFs? 
Yeah, well, we've seen a real surge of activity on our platform. And last year, we spent a lot of time uh, doing load testing and making sure we could handle a 10x surge of traffic. You know, what's incredible is that as Bitcoin touched and surpassed the previous all-time highs, in the, in the span of about an hour, we saw more than a 10x surge of traffic come in. And so it exceeded even our models of um, the amount of interest that could come in in a short period of time. So I think what's happening is that Coinbase is becoming a you know, systemically important financial institution for the world to power this new part of the economy. And we're going to have to continue to invest in our infrastructure um, e at an even greater level than we have in the past. So you know, look, it's good. It's a signal of adoption of crypto and how important it's becoming in the economy. But that just makes our job even more important. And we got to make sure we're, we're serving our partners and our, our customers with good infrastructure. I think it begs the question as well. You know, last about a week or so ago, we saw record uh, prices here for Bitcoin itself, which, of course, attracted a lot of interest into other crypto assets. I want to ask you about Ethereum here for a minute, because we've already gotten past those spot Bitcoin ETF approvals. Ethereum has always been a very popular crypto asset. But when you think about the tone in Washington and and what we've seen after that Bitcoin ETF approval. Do you think it's going to be as easy the second time around? <laughs> I shouldn't say easy because it did take years to get here, but as smooth or as likely uh, for investors to see that ETH uh, Ethereum ETF be approved uh, just as swiftly? Yeah, I mean, I think the ETFs, the Ethereum ETFs very clearly should be approved and you know, everybody deserves equal treatment under the law. Unfortunately, um, some of this crypto stuff has gotten a little bit politicized at our federal agencies. And there's unfortunately this kind of turf war between the CFTC and the SEC about, you know, is it a commodity, is it a security, et cetera. And I think the facts are pretty clear that Ethereum is a commodity, but that's not going to stop folks from trying to throw a wrench into things. And so, you know, if, if it does get delayed unfairly, um, I think the industry will have to follow a similar path to what happened with Bitcoin, which is they'll essentially go to the courts and, you know, the courts will compel uh, the regulators to follow the, follow the rules, follow the law, right, um, and give equal treatment under the law. So it, it may take additional effort, but I think um, it re they really should be approved right away. And, and it, I was really pleased to see that Coinbase was actually named as the custodian in five of the eight Ethereum ETF applications. So it continues to be an endorsement of us as a platform that um, people want to build on top of. That was what I was going to ask you. What is Coinbase's role as more crypto assets see an ETF wrapper come to the surface here? Of course, you have a large custody business here. You are kind of running the show here when it comes to most of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. But do you think that this is also a business where more people will seek to diversify their custodians? Will that have a big impact on your business? Well, we want there to be a diversity of custodians in crypto. And of course, people should be able to store crypto themselves, too. That's one of the unique things. In crypto, you can kind of be your own custodian. So there should be a diversity in the ecosystem. I think Coinbase is really just trying to be one of those trusted pillars that folks can build on. And it's great. Like the ETFs, they can build on top of us as a custodian. They also need trading services often, uh, financing, you know, settlement, other, or, or other sorts of services that we provide. But there, I think there's even if we get you know an ETF for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, kind of go on down the list, um, and eventually, by the way, we should have index funds. You know, hopefully there someday there can be a Coinbase 500, kind of like the S&P 500 with the top 500 coins by by market cap. Um, all kinds of things could get built in the future. But these aren't just passive investments that people want to do. Crypto increasingly has more and more utility. People are paying for things. You know, now on, with USDC. You can actually send it instantly anywhere in the world for free um, on, a, on Ethereum, a layer two solution called Base. So we can revolutionize payments. Um, you know, what I talked about earlier with artists getting paid and decentralized social media, it's kind of the future of how the internet is going to get built and how a lot of applications are monetized. So people are going to come to Coinbase when they want to hold crypto directly, when they want to actually use crypto, when they want to get access to staking and other products, uh, Coinbase cards, so they can spend their crypto at any merchant where Visa is accepted. I think these are very additive. We can be an infrastructure provider to traditional financial services, and we can be the retail app, the institutional app for people who want to directly use crypto. Now, Brian, as you head to Washington now for the summit tomorrow, I also want to kind of point out here that you've had a large voice here in advocating for pro-crypto candidates. 
where does the rubber hit the road? Is it really making a difference at the end of the day when America is also facing a whole host of other challenges like inflation? Well, it's funny. Actually, inflation ties really neatly into crypto. I mean, the expansion of the dollar money supply is probably the biggest driver of inflation in the U.S. And a lot of average people, you know, they may not think about quantitative easing or fiscal deficits, but they do notice that the prices or things have gone up at the gas station or the grocery store. And so inflation is a big tentpole issue. I think increasingly people are starting to realize that Bitcoin is the antidote to inflation. It is a very important check and balance on deficit spending. And I think for the U.S. Uh, to remain um, a global superpower, a financial hub, technology hub, and for the dollar to keep its reserve currency status, which you know I very much want as an American, we need a check and balance because, of course, you know in the early 1970s, the dollar was fully decoupled at that time from hardback commodities like gold. And mm -hmm. since then, it's followed a similar pattern to other nations around the world. So anyway, I think, I think Bitcoin is increasingly becoming a part of the political dialogue. And Coinbase has tried to help out here, um, help these 52 million Americans who've used crypto. By the way, you know, that's 5x the number that own an electric vehicle, 3x that, mm -hmm. you know, have a union card. So it's it's a massive constituency, right. and I don't think a lot of people in D.C. realize that. We've right. contributed to organizations like StandWithCrypto.org, which is building a grassroots movement. We've contributed to organizations like FairShake, which right. had great uh, outcomes in the Super Tuesday elections. So mm -hmm. we really need to get pro-crypto, pro-innovation candidates elected that mm -hmm. recognize the need for regulation that right. balances protecting we, consumers. We have to leave it there. We're hitting up against a break, but we hope to have you back soon. And uh, good luck with that conference over there tomorrow. We'll want to hear all about it later. That's Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong.